Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and today I've got an absolutely stormer of a video for you. If you want to know how to identify amber, real genuine amber, stay in the uh, video guys. Stay tuned. Okay, basically um, I always believed amber was tree sap, but it's actually not. Amber is plant resin formed fossilized plant resin that's formed over millions of years it it did drip down through trees and things um, and sometimes it filled in fissures and that and trapped insects and debris and that's how you get insects and things inside your amber um, but I did I on, honestly always thought it was tree sap but it's actually plant resin that is fossilized so I learned something new today also guys. Um, during the Victorian, the Georgian time and even now uh, people fashion it, polish it and turn it into jewellery. Now we're going to actually look at a piece of jewellery I have today. This is the piece of jewellery I've got. Now this is called Egg York Amber because of the colour. It's a beautiful, beautiful brooch, and it's probably made in the early 19th century. Um, what I intend to do today is show you how to identify amber. There's a few different tests. You have the visual inspection. Um, I'm going to do some photographs, and I'll splice them in in between this. Visual inspection, basically, um, is basically what you're looking for. You're looking for the crazing, the tiny crackle in the amber but that's not the only indication you're looking for imperfections running through the amber uh, bits of dirt stuck inside um, very rare to find insects guys if you see any amber with an insect in it then 99 well, 999 out of a thousand they fake especially if it's a whole insect um, but you're looking for imperfections um, it's not going to be a solid color all the time it's going to well, you'll see in the photographs I do anyway. Um, and what I've actually got, guys, is, believe it or not, I ordered myself a little clip-on macro lens. That clips onto the phone. I, it came with a few extra lenses. You clip that onto your phone like that, and then it turns your phone into a magnifying glass. And you can still zoom in through the macro lens to take really close-up photographs using your phone. So that's what I've done, and I've done some really nice photographs showing you the cr the colour imperfections. It's not a solid colour. It's showing you all the the finish, the imperfections in the finish. It's everything. So first of all, it's the visual inspection. That's key. And I, as I've said, I'm going to cut in loads of photographs for you. I've also got a piece that is trying to be amber, but is more plastic and we're going to do some comparisons. Another way would be friction test and I'm going to show you how to do a friction test in a few minutes. Yeah, we'll cover the friction test in a few minutes. Another way is salt water testing and again I'm going to run a salt water test in front of you so you can see what I mean by salt water test. There are a few other ways but we look at these couple first and we will uh, go from there. So we'll start off with the visual. So I'll cut in now the images of the visual test. So stay tuned, guys.
Okay, so that's the visual test done. You saw all the crackling, you saw the imperfections running through the amber versus this bit of supposed amber. Now, you can't always go just on visual inspection. That's why we have multiple different ways of telling. Visual inspection is one way. Um, but what's to say it's not a bit of Bakelite or celluloid or something like that that's really aged and uh, still got that bit of craze in and really does look like a bit of amber. So, we're going to move on to the salt water test. Glass of tap water, guys. Has to be warm enough to dissolve your salt. And I put quite a bit of salt in this. I'd say a good five to seven teaspoons of salt. Now, I'm going to put that, all that there. Hopefully you can see that clear. Here's the plastic, supposed amber. Straight to the bottom. Sunk like a rock. Here's a piece of amber. Floats. Doesn't float in normal water, guys. It has to be salty water. But you see the plastic drop straight to the bottom. Let me show you it again. I'll show you with a bigger piece of amber so you don't think it's because it was a small piece. Big piece, big piece. Plastic. Gently placed, straight to the bottom. Amber, gently placed, straight to the top. That is the salt water test. Now, when you're doing your salt water test, do not use kettle water. It has to be hot enough to dissolve the salt, not hot enough to destroy your jewellery. Now, this testing has a problem. Basically, if it comes and it's mounted with metal, gold, silver, base metal, or any other form of metal, then it's going to sink. As you can see here, my brooch is all mounted in metal. So the weight of the metal would take it straight down. So this test, the saltwater test, is perfect for beads and things like that. So if you see you buy a broken necklace or a brooch and it's just amber and you want to know if it's amber, salt water test, guys. Now there's another test you can do. I don't know if you can see on there, but there's a couple of strands of hair I've generously donated already. <laughs> so you get your piece of amber and you get a cloth and you've got to rub. What you're after, have you ever used a balloon and you rub it on your head like this and you'd go like this on your head and then uh, you stick it to the ceiling and you get friction. So you do that, you get some friction and it picks up the hair. Hopefully you can see the hair attached to it off the friction. However, you do the same with a bit of plastic nothing at all it's not lifting it guys so it's the friction test amber does conduct a form of electricity it will pick up frictional electric um, static electric friction um, and then even now will it no, it's gone already. It's not picking up already. So, it doesn't last long. So when you're doing it, try it and lift. Um, so there's another test, guys. Static electricity, friction. Pick up the uh, hair. You have to donate a few hairs to try it, but I'm sure you can uh, spare a few. <laughs> so, you got the salt water test. You got the um, appearance, as in inspect the piece of visual and you've now got the friction so we'll move on from there okay so you're wondering where I've gone you know I am here but there is another test hello <laughs> black light guys 
Now, as you know, you should carry one of these anyway if you're into antiques. They help you with so much. You can see restoration on porcelain with black lights. You can see whether a Georgian drinking glass is English or continental from the soda or the lead glass. Um, there is so much stuff you can do with these black lights. You've got a piece of 1930s uranium glass. It will glow and beautifully sparkle. So get yourself one of these. They're quite cheap. Anyway, the next test, amber should fluoresce. I don't know if I can pick it up in the um, video for you, but um, I will do photographs. I don't know if you can pick it up, but amber fluoresces to a little degree. It is, I can see out to the eye, but I don't know if it's picking it up to the camera, guys. But I have done photographs anyway of it, and I'm hoping it's picked it up in photographs. This is the plastic, and it is the exact same colour as it was out of the uh, light where the amber is changing colour totally it's fluorescing so that's the next test guys amber will change colour and fluoresce where the plastics will stay the same colour more or less Okay guys, the next tests for amber I'm not going to do because as I've already told you this is a almost 200 year old brooch and this is actually the brace that it just needs restringing and I'm not going to damage it. But the test you can do is you heat a needle up. Now I know what you're going to say, it's going to melt. Yes it is. That's why I'm not going to do it. You get a very hot pin or needle and you go to a little spot that's not as noticeable and you just touch it and when it melts you should have an old pungent tree smell um, totally different to the smell of plastics the only way I could explain it um, and to be honest with you I've never done this one I've only read it is if you're unsure of the smell of it melt some, melt some plastic and if it smells like that it's not going to be uh, amber but a hot pin into it let it melt a bit and you smell and it's like an old pungent pine tree type smell to it uh, and that is how you do a hot needle test but as I've already said I'm not doing that to this now another test you can do for amber this is to distinguish amber between glass not other Bakelite, celluloids or other things. If you want to tell, is it glass or is it amber, you get a needle again and you scratch it. But again, you're doing damage if it is amber. So be very careful where you scratch it, how you scratch it, and how hard you scratch it. If it's glass, you can dig your pin and it's just going to slide off. But if it's amber, it's going to scratch. Or I should say, if it's amber, celluloid, Bakelite or one of those, it's, this is to determine whether it's glass or whether it is another you know softer substance so you got the scratch test uh, okay guys the final test uh, will be basically a scent test and you have to rub your amber to warm it up slightly and then smell it but this isn't an easy test because one you need to know what amber smells like um, compared to other materials you, it has to spell, uh, smell um, copal. Baltic amber tends, uh, tends to be stronger. I've got a computer here for the uh, scent test because I've never done this one myself. I couldn't do it. Um, to be totally honest with you, I'll rely on salt water, fluorescent light, and visual inspection. I've never done the scent test, but apparently it uh, you have to be able to tell the difference with, between Baltic amber and copal I couldn't so my my opinion is get yourself a really good jeweler's loop eyeglass a good strong one get it under the glass 
and look at the amber, the visual inspection and everything else. It's everything about it guys. And if it's it's not just the visual inspection. If you've got a brooch that's portraying to be a, a 200 year old brooch with amber, then it has to have weight. So it's not just the way, it's the way it's constructed. Everything has to be right. But just refer to the simple amber tests. Um, you know, salt water, visual, things like that. If you have to um, do a hot pin test, then whatever you do, melt half a dozen plastics first, different types of plastics, get the smell of those, and then when you melt a piece of amber, or just touch it with a hot pin, Hopefully it'll be different enough for you to say, yeah, that's not plastic. So, other than that, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to splice in some beautiful photographs of this brooch now at the end. Now, why is, I'm just finishing off, uh, why is amber so uh, copied and why do people worry about it so much? It is simply just tree sap. Simple reason is, antique amber can be up 10, 15, 20 pound a gram in jewellery. So if you've got a bracelet or a necklace and a string of amber pearls or beads, uh, they will weigh it. And if it's 34 grams, you might get three and a half hundred pounds for that. It's as dear as gold. It really is. Um, and some of the colours, egg yolk is one that is rare. This is a beautiful brooch. I've actually got this brooch up on eBay. Um, I think it's about four and a half hundred pounds for the bracelet, beads and the brooch. Obviously, I accept best offers, but that was about based on about ten pound a gram or even just under. So that's why people fake amber, guys. It's coming out of China, well, just like everything else. Loads of copies and fakes and counterfeits are coming out of China, and anything that pulls money, such as amber, is one of them. So you need to know if you're spending any money, how to test it, guys. I'm leaving it there. I hope uh, this video has helped you. Um, what can I say? I hope it have anyway. <laughs> if you've enjoyed, I would really, really appreciate a like and a share, guys. Uh, please share. You'll find me on Facebook. I have a page in the group Antiques Arena. You'll find me on eBay. I have a page Antiques Arena Clearance. Make sure you add the word clearance. I'm on my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Or you can come visit me at the shop, which is Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Fox, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Guys, I really, really hope this has helped. And um, if you have, go find yourself some amber and earn yourself some money. <laughs> Bye for now.